Hey everybody! So we're gonna look at the inclined plane problem right now. And what I want to do is um, I'm gonna actually ignore my own directions. Ew, rebel! Um, we're going to split the gravity components because I want to do that video that I promised you where I actually explain where these components come from. So the first thing is we have this block and we know that it's going to slide down the inclined plane like that. And so what I want to do is I want to actually pick a coordinate system that it sort of works for me to solve this problem. So that's why I'm actually going to make my x and y direction follow the grade of the incline plane. Now I know a lot of you like to draw your force components on the mass like this. It's very pretty. There's a normal force and there's the weight. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy that down here. So we have our normal force, and we have our weight pointing down like that. Ooh, that's very good. Now here's the deal. What we're going to do is, um, now that we have this new coordinate system, that means that our normal force is in the y direction in this coordinate system. But now we have a problem in that our weight is pointing at, relative to this coordinate system, a strange angle. And so we need to split it into two components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the components of the weight right here. So there's one component that makes the mass slide. And then there's another component that points in the y direction. So this weight is made up of two parts. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and actually draw that right here. So I have one component like this. And I have a second component like that. And um, let me just make sure I got this here. Good. I can move that around, which we'll do in a second. Now, to this end, I want to do a little bit of trig to identify some angles here just to help me. So I know this angle is theta. I know that this angle here is 90 degrees. And since the angles of a triangle actually have to add up to 180, what that tells me is this angle all the way up here has a value of 90 minus theta. This right here is a right angle. And so what that tells me is right here is another angle theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the relevant information here that I need to solve the problem. So I'm going to take this angle here and copy it. This angle is theta. And now what this does is this gives me a triangle that I can use to figure out the length of this vector component and the other vector component right here. I don't even know if I can erase this little w. I can't. I'm just going to write over it because I can. So, whoops. Come on now. There we go. I want that big W out of the way. So I'll write it like that over there. Now here's the deal. I have the X component here and the Y component of the weight here. And if you look at this triangle, this right here is the hypotenuse. And so what I can do is I can use Sokotoa to help me out. For those of you that don't know what Sokotoa is, it's a way of learning your trig stuff. You can just Google that. So we have the sine of theta is x over w. Now I know what you're thinking about x's and y's and sines. Don't look at that. Actually look at this triangle right here. This is the that leg, that's the opposite leg, and that's the hypotenuse leg. And for the cosine of theta, we have y over w. And so what's going to end up happening is the x component of weight is going to be w sine theta, and the y component of weight is going to be w cosine theta. And so when we actually set up our free body diagrams for these dudes, this is in fact the setup that we need to solve problems.